what up YouTube? -y? Denny in Saigon. American expat. Thanks for watching my video. If you are. About ten of you. Actually one guy has been watching my videos. He's a Australian guy. Nice guy. He's been messaging me. Watches all my videos. Thinks he's I think he's the one guy's been liking him. <laughs> Thank you. He's coming back to Vietnam. I think he's maybe he's back by now. I'm not sure how to pronounce his YouTube name. Um, welcome back, buddy. There's a lot of Australian guys here. Australia's not too far away. Some British here. And uh, just a small number of Americans. Not too many. There are some. There's a Miss Saigon bar of town uh, in the uh, Japanese district. And uh, there's quite a few Americans hanging out there every night. That's probably all of them. Just about all of them. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how many Americans are here, but not that many. More Australians. Vietnam is a very nice place to live. And it is affordable. And the food is pretty good, mostly. Yeah, street food is cheap. It's everywhere. They got a lot of nice well, restaurants of all kinds in the city of Saigon. Lots and lots of places to eat in Vietnam. A lot of restaurants of all kinds. Uh, all different kinds of seafood and Vietnamese dishes and Korean food. Thai food. I find that sometimes. I'm not into seafood so much, but I do like shrimp. I have had crab here that was really, really good. I don't like to uh, look for my food. I don't eat crab very much. I tried crocodile here. I tried crocodile here, and uh, it was pretty good. I think I had goat kebab. It was pretty good. Never, never eaten dog. I'm not into that. I'm not going to be eating dog. When I first got here, I uh, I was out by myself, and I was hungry and just feeling adventurous. I don't often do. I decided to just stop in the restaurant and look nice. And uh, nobody could speak English there, but I used to translate and all that. Come to find out that all they served was dog. That was the main dish in the restaurant was dog. It was right there in District 2. <laughs> so I was like, I just ordered a beer. <laughs> No dogs, no cats for me. Cows and pigs better watch out though. Teacher Denny likes to eat. <coughs> My girlfriend is, uh, she's an outstanding cook. She cooks really well. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> I really do. My grandma, uh, my great grandma who raised me, she was an outstanding cook. She started cooking when she was a little girl and she could make everything. Like, make it from scratch, basically. You know, when I was a kid, my grandma used to get the flour and the dough, or flour and the water out, make dough, and roll it out on the kitchen table and make noodles. I miss those days, of course. She used to make me uh, her probably her most famous dish, uh, potato ribbles, potato ribble soup. Everybody come over to have her soup. She made it all the time. I loved it. Everybody, everybody loved it. My mom learned how to make it just like pretty much like my grandma does. And my girlfriend makes it too. It doesn't come out exactly like my grandma does. I don't really know how to show her how to make it like that, but it's pretty close. I think they don't have, uh, russet potatoes aren't as popular here. They have more of like sweet potatoes and stuff. The stuff you get at the market, it kind of varies. I mean, I'm no expert on vegetables, but I really don't like vegetables that much. They do have a lot of, a big variety of stuff here though. If you're into food, I'm sure you'd have a grand old time at the markets here. 
they have all kinds of meat, fruits of every kind. I mean, just all kinds of fruit. They even get imported fruit here. Uh, a nice girl I met down in uh, in the province when I uh, had broken broken my arm and uh, I had stitches in my arm and her sister was uh, one time a vet. <laughs> Uh, so they were uh, helping nurse me basically I was going over there every day and they were putting medicine on me and cleaning my wounds for me they were just being so kind and uh, she gave me cherries every day that she imported she sells fruit down there in uh, Tian Yang province she has imported cherries from Washington and uh, they're really delicious But you do got to be careful here with food and stuff because, uh, crazy as it sounds, uh, the Chinese fake a lot of stuff. They fake foods that you wouldn't think uh, would be possible to fake. And they sell that stuff, and they sometimes they sell it here in Vietnam. Uh, I mean, they make fake eggs. <laughs> sounds crazy, but yeah, looks like the real thing. But anyways, that's, uh, you know, uh, fake alcohol. I think they got a lot of fake alcohol here. Like vodka. There's quite a bit of vodka. I've never seen tequila or anything like that. Wine and vodka. Champagne. A lot of beer. The beer is pretty good here. The beer's uh, excellent in Cambodia. It's absolutely, it's awesome. My girlfriend went to Cambodia here recently and brought me back some Angkor beer. So it's good, straight out of the tap there. Drink a lot of it. It's a beer culture here and there. Here, the guys, uh, the men, the Vietnamese men, they always uh, love to drink beer with you. They're very friendly. And uh, and they're happy to sit down and uh, have you drink beer with them. And the first thing they'll ask you is, uh, First they'll ask you if you can sing, can you sing, and then they'll ask you how much beer you can drink. And uh, Teacher Denny can drink a hell of a lot of beer. Shouldn't be doing it, but I can. I can drink a hell of a lot of beer and drive home. And the beer's good here, I like Ba Ba Ba, but I prefer Heineken really, it's the best, best beer here. But they have Tiger beer, it's, it's Vietnamese beer, it's pretty good. Uh, let's see, what other, uh, Saigon beer, it's not bad. Maybe there's another I'm forgetting. The Rue, I'm not sure where that's from. Uh, yeah, this intersection sometimes a little dicey. Not too bad right now. Intersections are fairly dangerous here. As you might imagine. I don't know who's coming here. There's got to be somebody out there who's uh, thinking about coming here, probably watching my videos. And uh, if you're coming here, yeah, welcome to Vietnam. You'll love it. It's a nice country. Nice people. Can't say enough good things about them. They love their kids here, too. It's uh, nice to be a teacher here. Kids are generally pretty pleasant. I'm about to go teach a little five-year-old girl for an hour. Uh, and then I'm gonna go teach some classes. The little five-year-old girl, uh, her name is Julie, and she's uh, the daughter of the director. And her English is, uh, she's, uh, she's pretty much at the level of a five-year-old in the USA. Yesterday, she was, uh, she was pretending to cook and melting cheese for me and, <laughs> She's, uh, she can speak real well. She's, she's, uh, she's a pleasure. I like spending time with her. I got an hour with her and then I'm gonna go, I get to like, uh, I get to practice. Like basically they pay me to just sit in the, in the lobby there and speak to all the students who come in. And that is, uh, that can be overwhelming sometimes because there may be, there might be 20 or 30 students. At, you know more walking in all the time and uh, then maybe they'll have uh, they're into noise here a lot they might have a PA system with music playing they might have a TV going at the same time 20 or 30 kids and motorbikes going you know traffic I mean it just becomes 
a lot. So I do the best I can. I do the best I can. I'm trying to counter that here in Cambodia as well. I had a class in Cambodia with a big time construction going on right outside the window. Never could hear my students. But you, you do the best with what you got to work with. That's what I try to do here. Sometimes they're a little bit unorganized in uh, Asia, as you might imagine, uh, just, uh, just to deal with it. I just try to please my uh, my employers there and do what they want me to do best I can. I, I look for the easiest teaching jobs. I am not looking for the most difficult teaching jobs because uh, what they want from you will vary a lot. Some of them are pretty difficult. Not into that. Sometimes they want you to be in you know a great big class. It's brutally hot in uh, maybe an hour and a half. Maybe longer, which is really bad. <laughs> Had three hours one time, which was insane. But 30 minutes is just about right. It's hard to keep their attention for more than 30 minutes or whatever. They get bored, you know. It's, it's school. They want you to play games a lot, which I do. But it's uh, it's hard to uh, to keep them all entertained and stuff. You've usually got a couple of them, or you know, the boys. It's in the language center. The boys are going to get rowdy. Because they, they let boys be boys here, which I don't mind, but it's uh, maybe not conducive to the classroom environment. I don't want to see them, uh, like in the public schools, they walk around and whack them with a ruler. I don't really like uh, to see them doing that, so I do like teaching in the centers better. There's a lot of language centers. Uh, Vietnam is on fire to learn English. And it's difficult for them. It's just, uh, it's real difficult to learn Vietnamese, you know. If you wanted to learn Vietnamese, you'd probably put as much effort into it as they do learn English. It's hard for some reason. It's uh, pronouncing their words and stuff just makes, almost makes your throat hurt. I took German in high school. And I, ne I, I don't like speaking German, really. It's, it's uh, hard to part of my throat, maybe, I guess. I don't know. I can speak English. That's good enough for teacher Danny. I've been able to pick up a little bit from a lot of different languages, but just a little. I'm not fluent in anything but English. Not not fluent in English. I'm a native speaker. I guess it's the level above fluent. If you're a native speaker, you don't really have to think about the rules, you know. And the, the Vietnamese teachers here, the English teachers here, some of them have really good English and others uh, have pretty poor English speaking skills. But they, uh, they know grammar, you know, forwards and backwards. They have that down. They know the grammar rules better than I do. Uh, but I can just, I can speak without thinking about it or write even better. Sometimes I don't speak perfect uh, grammar, but when I write, I do. I read it again and then correct it. Uh, unless it's a message. If you get a message from me and it's all messed up, don't don't complain to me. Don't be a grammar Nazi. Yeah, so I got to ride across Saigon every day. 32. Which I don't really mind, unless it's uh, raining hard, then I gotta stop for coffee. I don't like to ride in hard rain. Doesn't often rain real hard, but it does sometimes. A lot of times it's just a light rain. You can actually put a raincoat on and ride in it. Just be careful. Many hazards, just gotta be careful. I really like riding a motorbike. It beats, uh, it beats over in the car. So if I go back to the USA, I'm going to have to own a car. Because uh, in Indiana, you can't, uh, there's no, you can't work unless you have a car. I mean, online maybe. I may be forced to work online. i got circumstances I'm dealing with, but Indiana, you got to have a car. You end up, I, I live in a small town, and 
you work at a, some place, you're going to have to drive 20 miles to get there. That's going to suck. Another thing that's going to suck for me is my psoriasis. I have psoriasis kind of bad on my hand and it gets pretty bad in the winter there. For whatever reason, I can't, I cannot get cream, you know. I go to the doctors, I've went to the doctors maybe five times in the USA looking for uh, some prescription medicine for my hand. They always tell me there's nothing they can give me and they uh, want to give me pills. You know, here's uh, three prescriptions for pills and here's three more for the side effects. But uh, here, you just, I just go to the pharmacy window and show my hand and next thing you know, I got cream. Works like a charm, cleans it right up. Cost me about a dollar or whatever. So that's the big difference, you know, between here and there. I mean, if you need heart surgery, you're gonna to wanna to be in the USA, but if you need something like that, you're gonna to, gonna to wanna to be here because I can't even get it there. I can't get through the firewall of doctors that wanna give me pills instead. So, you know, I miss home in a lot of ways, but in a lot of ways, uh, Vietnam is uh, better for me. I don't know. You know, I notice what's going on in the USA, of course. Sometimes, maybe if you see my videos, I rant about uh, politics. I've been uh, politically opinionated for most of my life. It's only in recent times they've been, you know, censoring anyone who's not a lefty. So I, I fully expected that. I kind of, I see the trend. I knew we were headed left and it's gonna get a lot worse. They're going to, uh, you know, they're gonna control the flow of information. They're gonna be shutting off some information. They're gonna be uh, criminalizing dissent. That's the way it goes, man. Everybody's had to fight to be free. Didn't think he was just gonna be allowed to be free forever. Yeah, that wasn't gonna happen. I'm a little bit hungry for some reason. I only had two pieces of chicken today from KFC. A lot of times I have three. I'm such a big fat pud. I really like KFC chicken. Uh, I eat it a lot here. But I could eat all kinds of different stuff. They have come Tom, rice and meat, get it with an egg, it's pretty good. Should be getting me some of that. I think maybe that's what I'll have. Well, my girlfriend cooks for me at night. I think I'm having potato soup. She loves to cook. I brought her over here uh, yesterday. Brought her to District 12 and she went to a coffee shop and she showed the lady there how to make kimchi. Sometimes she does that. She takes, she goes and she shows people how to make this stuff. And she, uh, I don't know what they compensate her with. Something. Yeah, here I'm in District 12. If you watch my videos, you kind of know where I might be. Uh, this traffic, uh, if it seems a little intimidating, it is. I'm gonna beat this truck. I did it. And I beat this motorbike. Yeah, you just have to have a lot of awareness. It's really a big deal that you do. Even if you are safe and aware and everything, uh, you can still get, you know, get smoked anytime here. That's what I'm worried about, getting, getting flattened by a truck coming from behind me or something. I'm trying not to let that happen. And see, you got people hauling stuff down the road. That guy's probably gonna drive across town now. <laughs> you see that, you see that. I mean, you just see everything going down the road on the back of a motorbike. You see things you would never think anyone could put on a motorbike, but they do. They're all right, here I am. Midmark. <laughs> 